Okay, today I want to talk to you about projectile motion. Projectiles are objects that travel through two dimensions where the only force acting on them is gravity. A projectile could be a baseball thrown from one person to another. It could be a uh, long jumper. It could be a bullet. It could be a cannonball. Projectiles cannot have wings because we don't want to have lift. They can't have engines or rockets or jets. The only force acting on them has to be gravity. Some of the key things to know about projectile motion, we saw in our um, labs that we did, one of the features that you want to remember is like with this pod racer. When this thing is moving, when it leaves the table and becomes a projectile, it travels at a constant horizontal speed. So just because it left the table, doesn't mean that its horizontal speed changes. So the projectile remains at the same horizontal speed for its entire trip. We saw this when we tracked it. We saw that the horizontal position versus time was linear. And even when it left the table, it did not change slope. So the projectile remained at the same horizontal speed of 2.18 meters per second for the entire time. The other thing to remember about projectiles we also saw in lab, and that was when Mr. Manton fired this apparatus that showed one ball falling straight down and one ball being projected outward. And you can see that both balls fell at the same rate. Just because the uh, ball had a horizontal push to it and a horizontal speed did not affect its rate of fall. It still fell at 9.8 meters per second per second. So the big idea we saw in the lab is that the horizontal motion takes place at a constant speed and that the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are separate. The way we solve a projectile problem is by breaking up this complicated motion into two parts. A horizontal part that takes place at a constant speed and a vertical part that acts like free fall. The thing that links the two parts together is time. The time will be the same for both parts. I'm now going to show you an example problem of the pod racer leaving my desk. We're going to try and predict how far the pod racer travels horizontally before it hits the ground. Okay, I'd like to show you here how we're going to find the landing location of a projectile that is moving horizontally. This is based on the pod racer that went off of our lab table the other day. The pod racer left the table traveling horizontally at a speed of 2.18 meters per second. The lab table had a height of 0.91 meters. We're trying to find delta x. The way you're going to solve this problem is you're going to start out by making a table. And in the table you want to have two different parts. One part tracks the horizontal motion of the projectile and the other part tracks the vertical motion of the projectile. On the horizontal side you're going to track the uh, range, the speed, and the time. On the vertical side, you're going to track the vertical displacement, the initial vertical speed, the final vertical speed, the acceleration, and the time. Because this takes place on Earth, we're going to have an acceleration of negative 9.8. The lab table is 91 centimeters tall, so it's going to fall a distance of 0.91 meters. It's going to have an initial velocity of zero in the vertical direction because it was moving only horizontally. And then we're going to have a horizontal speed of 2.18 meters per second. Okay, what you want to do is do the vertical side first. You need to find VF and you need to find time. You can use any of your equations of motion that will work. Probably the best one to start with is VF squared minus VI squared equals 2A delta X. You'll use this to find the final speed. Your initial speed is zero. Your acceleration, negative 9.8. And your distance, 0.91. Okay, you're then going to multiply these out. Get a value. Take a square root of that value. And remember, when you get your answer, it's going to be either plus or minus. Once you get your answer for that, you could then use VF equals VI plus AT and you'll plug in your VF remember it's going to be a negative number your V initial is 0 9.8 times T you solve it for T 
once you get your time, you're going to put it both on the vertical side and you're going to put it on the horizontal side. On the horizontal side, you're going to use velocity equals delta x over t. You're trying to find the delta x. Use the horizontal speed along with the time that you find from your equation to find delta x. I'm going to leave the actual math work to you. This shouldn't be a problem. So again, you find the final velocity. You make it negative because it's moving down. You then use that final velocity to figure out the time in the air. You use the time in the air along with your constant velocity equation to find out how far your projectile travels. The big thing to remember is anytime a projectile leaves horizontally, you make your initial vertical speed zero. You make your delta y negative because it's going down, and if you're on Earth, you're using negative 9.8 meters per second per second.